where I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and making my request to the Lord, my God for his holy here, Zion, while I was still in prayer, Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in a swift fright <clears throat> about the time of the evening sacrifice. He instructed me and he said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Daniel chapter number 9, verse 20 to 23. Activating divine encounter. I don't know. We need God. There is a place where we have come in this life and the things that are happening daily, we need God. And we need God in a little form. From theory. From stories. We need God more from someone's. We need to encounter God. In whatever form, He will appear to us depending on our maturity, on our levels, and our, our, our dimensions, and also depending on the purpose of God inside us. Because those are determining factors. What form God appears to anyone. But all in all, encountering the divinity is more essential than anything else. In fact, if there is something that will give man <clears throat> deep fulfillment, if there is something that can fill the gap in the heart of man, is a divine encounter. Daniel is in the nation of Babylon, in a captivity. And a Gabriel appears to him <clears throat> and comes to give him understanding, comes to give him instructions and understanding. The moment we encounter God, it is from the encounter we get counsel. We get directions. We get strategies. We get mechanisms of doing things in an excellent, successful way. And he came to give him understanding. He came to give him two things instruction and understanding the things that you are not able to sort out it's a sieve they are difficult to deal with them when you encounter God you understand everything everything is made clear everything is made transparent, you get that understanding. But how was Daniel positioned? Because in all these, what is of more of, of most interest is the positioning for the encounter. Number one, if you can borrow from that, number one is speaking. He is saying in verse 20, while I was speaking, we need to speak right. 
For according to the words of your mouth, that you shall eat thereof fruits. As I was speaking, that means he was making declarations. We need to move from self pity conversation, self casting conversation, and we started declaring things. I was speaking, and Job says, You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. Number one, speak positively. Number two, praying as he was praying. And you can see that with our Lord Jesus Christ at Gethsemane when he was praying. An angel appeared to strengthen him. Prayer is a fundamental cardinal requirement for God to reveal himself. A prayerless person will find it very difficult to experience the appearance and the encounters of God. Prayer is very important. Number three, confessing my sins and the sins of my people Israel. Identification of repentance. We were running a series of repentance. Power of repentance. And one of the things that made this angel appear to Daniel is because he was confessing sin. He then sin and repented the sin and he confessed the sin is always a veil that stops you from accessing the realm of God and that stops the realm of God from accessing you. Confessing his sin and the sin of the people of Israel. The next thing he was doing and making my request to the Lord my God for his whole heed. What is that? Petitioning God. The friend of Job told him, if I were you, I would appear to God about my case. He was petitioning God for his holy heal, meaning interceding for the kingdom of God. Wow. Interceding for the church. Interceding for the body of Christ. He was interceding for the holy hill of God, Mount Zion. He was interceding for Jerusalem. Another thing that we can borrow from Daniel, uh, uh, huh. as soon as you began to pray a word and all that. Uh, so that is the next, okay, the next thing I was forgetting, you can get it from Daniel 9, because this way it is captured better. Daniel 9 and verse 3. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer. We have seen prayer. Any petition, we have seen petition in fasting. In fasting. There is a level that God will not make himself known. Because that level is for those who have crucified their flesh. It's for those who have known how to offer their bodies as a living sacrifice. He was in fasting, 21 days fasting. So those people were good in fasting. Even, even when you hear people speaking, those who are very good in fasting, they mostly have abnormal encounters. Fasting is very, very important. The next thing he says, and in sackcloth and ashes, in sackcloth and ashes, what does it mean? In sacrament, we have seen confession, we, so we, we are done with that. But in sacrament here, it may mean humility. It may mean humility. And in ashes, it may mean submission. Humility and submission to God. Combine all of that. Remember, Daniel was an eunuch. So meaning he was holy, if we may say so. But to combine those factors together, God reveals himself. And if there is something that we need in this moment, is God to make himself clear to us. God reveal yourself to us.